Hi everyone, my name is Raul and this is my colleague Richard. We are both engineering managers at Spotify. The focus on diversity has created an enriched environment of cultures, ideas and innovation. However, this has been the sole focus on the industry. We believe that diversity is not enough. We must work for a culture of belonging to improve personal and mental growth in the organizations. There are a lot of amazing presentations on the topic of diversity and building a belonging culture by many skilled professionals. In this presentation, we'll share a simple story with examples of some simple practices that we do in creating a safer space for the engineers in our teams. First, I want to share a little bit of my background with you, which I believe that's not so different from some of my colleagues and also some people from this event. We all have several identities many layers that make who we are today. When we define ourselves as a person, we consciously and subconsciously bring all of those identities. When stepping in any place, we also bring those different identities with us. I couldn't walk in places and be my full self. Sometimes before starting my work day, I had to plan what I could share, my phone calls, my emotions, my reactions, my words, events from the weekend, so that no, nobody could see one of my identities as a gay man. All of that had a huge mental impact on me. It really drained my energies before even starting my work day. And most of the time, I didn't feel that I belonged there. It stressed me so much to keep some parts of myself shut. Because of this, I didn't have enough energy and focus to unlock my full potential. In my experience, I have been the lone representative of the black community in some of my previous roles and companies. Of course, this can be challenging. It has also been an opportunity to be myself, share my story, and hopefully influence and build in the belonging culture. We know that diversity is important, but most of the conversation, they stop there. It's actually the very first step. And most importantly, we have to make sure that employees can have their full selves in their teams. They can be seen and then also we take their backgrounds and their previous journeys into account. In this presentation, we want to share with you how belonging is important for us as individuals and how building an environment for belonging has several positive impacts in the teams and how we tech leaders can help in this process and build a safer space for engineers. A conversation about diversity and belonging has a lot of dimensions. In this simplified view, diversity is often what's talked about the most and easily measured. It is usually about employees from different minoritized groups. Inclusiveness starts with inclusive leadership, the role model behaviors, and then the process norms and the meeting norms. Belonging is about culture and perhaps the least tangible piece of this conversation. Looking in the industry, a lot of efforts on diversity can weigh on the hiring process and sometimes less emphasis throughout the employee life cycle. Marketing and communication are usually ensures that companies are attractive enough for different minoritized groups. And then recruiters are tasked with creating a diverse pipeline of candidates, plus all the internal bias training. But how can we, or how can the role of leadership be applied to this? How can we market inclusive leadership practices and belonging in this package as well? And here it comes belonging, which is a key element in this conversation about diversity and inclusion. As we said before, it's about the culture of the organization and the least tangible aspect. The opposite of belonging is exclusion. I started off at the University of California uh, shows that exclusion is damaging because it actually hurts. The sensation is aching to physical pain. Also, there was some uh, research that shows the impact of belonging in the organizations. High belongings linked to 56% increase in the job performance and 75% reduction in sick days. Also, exclusion leads to team and self-sabotage, which has impact uh, on the uh, financial, financial gains as well. Let's take a deeper dive into the culture of belonging. And for that, we're going to use a framework from HR that's called employee life cycle. 
So this is the employee life cycle. It's a model from HR and we can, it, it helps us to understand way better the journey of an individual in a company through these different phases. Uh, the good experience is made by adding elements of belonging in each of those phases. This life cycle is also a good way to ensure how we can keep track of your actions and ensuring long-term sustainable success. Belonging is about all of this micro experience that sum up and build a safer environment for the employee. A very simple example here. Let's say you're a tolerant, uh, you're a lactose intolerant person and then when you go to the first time for first day at work, you see that the company has coffee machines with uh, lactose free options or that the company is playing um, songs from Latin artists in the common areas during the Latin Heritage Month. We're not going to cover every single aspect of the uh, employee life cycle because we have a limited time. So we're going to focus on those ones that we tech leaders can have more impact. And also to understand better how we can put together a uh, culture of belonging and the employee life cycle, we're going to tell you the journey of Alex, a new employee that was recently hired. So on the story of Alex, she applies for a position at a company does very well and gets an offer. Before starting and before receiving all the cool and fancy company swag, Alex receives a welcoming email from her manager. She thinks this is a nice gesture and she could also see the use of pronouns. Using pronouns creates safer and more inclusive spaces for people to be themselves, knowing that other people are going to respect their identity, just like using a person's name can be a way to respect them. Alex starts at the company and has their first meeting with their manager, Lee. During the meeting, Lee initiates a lifeline activity exercise to share some of his background. Lifeline activity includes sharing elements of our personal life. This can help our teammates support us fully. For Lee, this is a, about being a role model and taking the first opportunity to build trust. It's about personal reflections and learning the diverse array of perspectives and experiences that both Lee and Alex brings to the team. I believe this is a process and it's not intended to make you share more than you're comfortable with. The next element of the employee life cycle is the onboarding. A good way to onboard an engineer is with, with a buddy, someone that gives some initial advice and also helps to acclimate socially the new joiner. Shanti was appointed by Lee because he believes that they can share something in common. So Shanti helps Alex with some practicalities in the team like uh, documentation to read, which uh, Slack channel she should join, uh, meetings and so on. And also Shanti introduces Alex to different communities in the company. The onboarding phase is a great opportunity for building allyship, showing how the organization care about every single community. Continuing the onboarding phase, let's think about something more structured like boot camps and intro days. So in this case, Alex also is introduced to the company values and culture and uh, she sees how diversity and belonging is an important part of the company. Also, Alex listened to talks around code of, code of conducts, anti-discrimination policies, and more. There, also, Alex is presented with her career development framework, so she can feel supported on her professional journey, independent of her background. Onboarding is a very good opportunity to provide a very good experience to the employee right away. However, it's usually underestimated. In the annual survey of uh, Stack Overflow in 2020, for example, more than half of the people that answered to the question said that they had a bad or no onboarding at all. A good onboarding experience accommodates and supports all of your employees. It doesn't matter their background. With inclusion in the on the forefront, you invite every single person to feel seen during their onboarding experience. They receive the support they need to get settled and ultimately able to contribute more fully. Continuing the story of Alex, she has the first of a weekly one-to-one -one meeting with her manager, Lee. At the meeting, Lee does a check-in and provides some feedback. One-to-ones are generally one of the most important leadership tools. It's an opportunity to build relationships with your engineers, provide support to help them perform and have a good work experience. 
Lee uses the check-in during one-to-one -one in the process of developing a personal relationship and also as an opportunity to, to care or show his care about the mental well-being of Alex. In some situations, the check-ins are one-to-one -one can steer the topic or the most important thing to be discussed at the meeting. The overall goal is about building long-term trust in relationship, staying aligned and informed, and giving feedback for each other to grow. It all starts with inclusive leadership. Here, Lee fosters inclusive practices in all the team's rituals, such as retrospectives and planning meetings. Having guides and playbooks available can create a fair rotation in the team, so any member that is comfortable can step up. Another important uh, recurring structure is a development talk. Again, by making it inclusive and providing templates and structure, we make, it, we make it accessible and useful for all the employees. Employees that didn't have no experience at all, for example, on driving their own performance journey for different reasons, right? They have a fair opportunity now. In our case, Lee also used the development talk to give Alex feedback, guide her, and support her career. Another example of recurring practices, not necessarily about the relationship manager-employee, is the practice of allyship. For example, Lee is an ally of the LGBT community, and he also helps to organize some events about, around the community. Lee acting as a role model shows Alex the importance of allyship. It also sends a positive message to the engineers how we can help and contribute with other engineers and like employees to have a better experience at, at their daily work. Other examples of showing support when traumatizing experiences happens to other communities than our own. Giving support is an act of allyship and shows to your colleague that their identities are seen and respected. So let's recap. There are a lot of dimensions involved in striving for belonging culture throughout the employee life cycle. In our experience, inclusive leadership practices, allyship, and focusing on our mental well being is helping us to create a safer space for the engineers in our teams. However, we want to remind you that this is like a lifelong journey and it's not so easy to measure the instant impact. That's where most of the uh, uh, companies, they fail because they are expecting very immediate results. Uh, there's not a perfect solution also to measure those impacts too, but a lot of effort and time has been invested with good improvements. You and your organization can develop surveys and focus on analyzing how they can make the best case for each of those phases in the uh, employee life cycle, for example. The organizations need also to check constantly the strategy to improve the belonging in the company. For instance, for instance, shifting from inclusiveness to belonging. It really depends where the organization is in this journey of belonging. Uh, I believe that these practices uh, are not so new for you and also they are not rocket science. Even I believe that some of you have put them in practice as well. Hopefully these are nice reminders for you to take them home. And also to ask yourselves how consciously you have been using these processes and these practices to create and nurture a culture of belonging. And also to understand that we as tech leaders we are also very responsible for the culture of belonging, not only HR and recruiters. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.